Hello viewers, and welcome to Exploring Cinema with Brian Meadows. I, of course, am Brian. So, as of actually recording this video, it is uh, very early J uh, July in 2017, and on the 12th, I will actually be a part of the Apes uh, Triple Feature event at our AMC theater that, that is right next to us. Um, it occurs two days before the world premiere of War for the Planet of the Apes, and it gives the viewers a chance to watch the first two Planet of the Apes uh, films before finally showing War. And I've already seen the first two, but Mallory hasn't, so um, before we go to see the triple feature, I will go ahead and make reviews on both films that precede War. And so, welcome to my review of Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Directed by Rupert Wyatt, the film follows a scientist named Will Rodman, who is working on, um, who's trying to create a cure for Alzheimer's, for a very, um, for like, um, you know, the normal good doctor reasons, but also a very, very personal reason. And while he's testing the drug on chimps, one of them gives birth, and Will takes it home to raise it, naming it Caesar. Immediately he notices that the drug has passed on from mother to son, and that Caesar has uh, a very heightened intelligence. Other than that, I am not getting too much further into the actual plot, just in case uh, some of you have not seen the movie yet. While the human cast in this film is a bit underdeveloped, there are a couple of good human performances. You have James Franco portraying Will, and he does a really good job. You have John Lithgow portraying uh, his Alzheimer patient uh, father in a slightly fun way, but not that comedic uh, way that we're used to seeing John Lithgow, and he did a pretty good job. And one that actually stuck out to me for the humans was Tom Felton. And when this movie came out, I had just seen him in Harry Potter. I think this one came out around the same time that uh, Deathly Hallows was ending. And it was weird seeing him um, not as Draco Malfoy, but honestly, he's, I feel like um, he's a bit typecast in that, um, in that role, you know, where he's just a dick. But no, the true star of this cast is Andy Serkis, who portrays Caesar through motion capture, or mocap as it's commonly referred. Circus took what could have been just a simple CGI character and infused Caesar with an uncanny and nascent uh, humanity. Circus made a character that was great and has expressions and mannerisms that are neither human nor ape-like, but instead are a beautiful marriage of the two. Circus gives a great performance as Caesar, not relying on dialogue, but on facial expressions and body language. A true Oscar-worthy performance. There's another ape in there that I absolutely loved. It was a circus orangutan uh, named Maurice, who speaks to Caesar using sign language, and he learned it while, um, you know, he was part of the circus. Their chemistry is, is extremely nice in this movie, and Maurice has a good bit of humor to his character. I actually think that some of the funniest lines in the movie were from him. The film stands on its own as a prequel, but sadly does not capture the brilliance of the original Charlton Heston film. That being said, it does not make this a bad movie at all. It really doesn't. It's, it's a pretty good movie with a good story. It's a bit of an awkwardly named story, but it's mostly easygoing until the uh, climactic action. And some people can become bored with this since it's mostly uh, just following Caesar as he grows up and learns, but I, I find the film fun. The visual effects in this film are awe-inspiring. Almost all of the apes were created digitally and portrayed through motion capture, and these apes look damn good. After a recent rewatch, however, some of the apes did look a little too CGI, but honestly that's because that was like the, that was the first time that they were doing that with apes, because in previous movies, uh, with, the, uh, with that kind of look, they've been focusing on makeup. They hold up despite all of the technological leaps that we've had in the visual effects uh, department of film these days. But honestly, the most impressive part for myself as far as the visuals, was the increased detail in uh, in uh, the ape's eyes. They were able to make the eyes more expressive, and it's amazing. The score is composed by uh, Patrick Doyle, and it's, an, it's a nice score. He doesn't try to introduce new themes, 
but goes with the approach of solid action scoring. And that can be good or bad or even indifferent depending on your opinion. There were there was definite potential uh, for this film or for the film score to be a great one. But the opportunities were not taken. In the end, it's an above average action score that could that could have and should have been a lot better. To recap, Rise of the Planet of the Apes is a decent story with um, a couple of really good um, human performances um, inside of a sea of underdeveloped human characters, a musical score that should have been better composed, but also um, comes with another um, mo a great mocap performance from Andy Serkis, as well as the other ape performers, and groundbreaking special effects. I give Rise of the Planet of the Apes a blue lightsaber. Thank you guys so much for watching and listening to me ramble on and on. Now, I must ask you, what did you guys think of Rise of the Planet of the Apes? Did you love it? Hate it? Were you indifferent? You haven't seen it yet? What were its strengths? What were its weaknesses? I'd love to know your opinions. I welcome new perspectives. Be sure to subscribe if you have not already for more reviews and content. There's always more to come. And for other ways to support my, my channel, check out in the description down below. Thank you guys once again for watching, and farewell until the next video. Bye.